Los Angeles and the rest of the world 5150 interview series I'm Jimmy Cabs and I'm proud to say that I actually got your last name correct Nathan Mysteric yep that's right Graves at Sea let's backtrack a little bit okay. last year on April Fools relapse record released okay I'm gonna say it because it's been said but I'm sorry I'm gonna re I'm gonna phenomenal monstrous cataclyptic fucking record by Graves at Sea. Congratulations on that. Thanks, man. Yeah, we were really proud of it. Um, I know a lot of people were saying over the years, like, how, never, when, are you guys, it'll never happen. when are you guys going to put out a full length? When are you guys going to put out a full length? And, uh, you know, we were just in the right place. We have a really good lineup right now, and uh, we were really pleased with the way it came out. 15, well, 16 years now in the waiting, right? Well, let's see. 2002 is when we started. So, yeah, like, yeah, 14, or yeah, 15 years. God damn, it don't seem that long. Here's the deal. Why are we talking about a record that came out last year? It's because Graves at Sea is back touring not only lovely Los Angeles here. By the way, are you enjoying how gentrification has set in? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, we, the last couple times we played in Los Angeles, we didn't come down to downtown area. So, like... It's kind of been a while since I've been in downtown are Los Angeles. Are you enjoying our beautiful homeless people out here? Yeah, yeah, the homeless people are good. There's a Whole Foods. It's right. great. Yeah. Right. I mean, unbelievable. The curse that is a year later, still as powerful, still as heavy, still as potent, and you're going to perform that live. How do you feel about playing it? Uh, good. Like, we've mostly been doing uh, material off the new record for this tour, um, throwing some of the old songs, but uh, the response has been really good, I think. Everybody feels like the record sounds good and people seem to be really happy here in the new material. And it's the first time we've been on the West Coast really playing a lot of the material, too. Yeah, man, I've noticed you haven't really toured much. No, well, like, uh, three out of four of us all had babies in the last couple of years. Oh, that sounds like a new record right there. Yeah, yeah. I, I think between the three of us, between stepkids and biological kids, we got 12. Fuck. <laughs> Partridge family type shit? Graves Partridge family, maybe? Yeah, yeah. My my son's been working on his vocals lately. My wife's been sending me some videos. <laughs> One of the things that I really enjoyed about Graves at Sea, you've mentioned, obviously, the length of time that it took to come out for the full length. But one of the things that I really appreciate is the fact that lately, I'd say within the last 10 years, heavy music, sludge, whatever the title is, becoming more and more popular. You've been playing some very instrumental shows, for instance, let me mention. Road, uh, you, Road Burn? Yep. Yeah, we played Road Burn, I think that was two years ago then. You played the Maryland Death Fest? Yep, we did that same year. We also, I, I made the mistake of calling it the Cycle Fest, but you played? Day of the Shred. How are the new audiences that are attending those shows receiving the material? Uh, I mean, everybody's been really good. I mean, Graves been around a long time, and we paid our dues and did the whole like biker bars and ten people turning out to the shows. But have you seen the hot chicks that are going to these shows? Yes, now? yes, of course I have, man. <laughs> are they rocking I'm, out? I'm not paralyzed. <laughs> One of the things that I really appreciate is the honesty in the music. It's so crushing, so devastating, and it's sincere. It's not fabricated. Yeah. Let me repeat that: fabricated. What goes into the writing process? Uh, I mean, like, the last record was kind of interesting, like, I, Nick usually writes the songs and then he'll give me the material, uh, the music, and then I'll usually write lyrics. I like to wait until after the song's already done to write lyrics because you'll get a certain feel for, like, what the song should be about or yeah. what the theme... Marinades in your subconscious? Yeah, like, what the theme for the song should be about, so usually I wait until after he gets done uh, writing the music before I actually write lyrics. Um, on the last record we did the full length, uh, our producer Greg uh, Wilkinson, uh, Brain Oil, great job. Brain Oil Lodman, he did do a good job. And uh, we actually, he helped me out writing lyrics. Like we sat in the studio and actually wrote some of those songs, like just sat down and bounced ideas off of each other. How so, was that process? Uh, it was awesome. Were you able to roll with that? Yeah. Uh, I mean, like I've been friends with Greg for a really long time and uh, he's a great musician, great lyricist as well. And uh, it was really fun just having, just sitting down with somebody and just bouncing ideas like, what do you think about this lyric? What about this lyric? Maybe we should change this to this. So, so was it, uh, I mean, I say this with all due respect, but aside from admiring uh, organically the writing process and how well it came, was it two angry fuckers in a room or what? Because that shit's brutal. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, we had some shit to get out. <laughs> right, and you sure did, man. Yep.
Let's talk about new material. You, are you in the process of writing new material now? We are. We're uh, doing a split with a band that will remain unnamed just because it's Legality not, purposes. It's not an official release yet. Haven't but, cleared it yet. Yeah. But uh, it's going to come out on Relapse, and uh, it's with another Relapse band, and uh, we're each doing two songs. One of them is going to be a 70s cover from each band, nice. and then uh, one original song from each band. Nice, man. When uh, do you possibly think this will be recorded and out? I don't know if we're going to do anything this year, so I'm guessing we'll probably record it spring of next year, so it'll probably be out by summer or winter, depending on like what the waiting line is for getting records pressed. Right. Yeah. yeah, you know, here in the United States, that's the big thing now, and I think there's, I think if I remember correctly, there's only two or three companies that do that here in the States? It's Yeah, it started to get really difficult. Like, I remember the days when, right? you, you know, you recorded a record, and then it's out on vinyl, you know, a month later. But, like, with uh, The Curse, for example, like, we recorded it in, I think, August, and then it couldn't even be released for, for, like, four months, and they just waited until spring because spring's a good time to release a record. But, yeah, there was, like, a, at least a four-month waiting list just to get vinyl pressed. When you release such an overwhelmingly catastrophic album like The Curse, does it give you pressure for the follow-up? Yeah, of course it does, right? man. Yeah, I mean... Nick's, Nick is a fucking riff machine. Like, he just turns out shit all the time. He'll, like, I Skype with him on a pretty regular basis, and uh, he'll fucking go, like, what do you think about this riff? What about this riff? And he's just turning them out. So he's showed me some of the stuff that he wants to do for, like, the next full length or for the split that we're doing. And um, there's definitely pressure there because I think that the that curse did come out really well. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not really worried about it. Like... I honestly feel like every release that we do gets like a little bit better and a little bit better. So I'm not that worried that the next release can't live up to that. I'm glad you said that. This is why I really enjoy bands like Graves at Seas because you do what you do for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, like I said before, we don't tour a whole lot, you know, especially now that we've got all the kids and everything. So we're definitely not a band that's doing it for a living. So we really just keep doing it because we have a good time doing it. And, enjoy it. And we just enjoy writing music. And, you know, I love all the people that I'm in a band with. So we have a good time doing it. Is that what keeps the creative process pure and untainted? Yeah, I think it definitely does. I mean, we all care a great... It's, but, you know, the new dudes that are in the band, they're not even new by this point in time, you know. <laughs> Ske Sketchy and Brian have been in the band for years now. So, you know, I call them the new guys. Uh, but... Yeah, like I just really enjoy being in a band with those guys and they everybody like does a good job at keeping the band together and the writing process is good and like everybody's got input. So, you know, it it's not that difficult. Like it it works out really organically. I'm really glad to hear that, man. Relapse Records, the curse that is. That could be for the whole United States. Every city has the curse that is. Is out now on Relapse Records. This is interesting. Graves at Sea is on a tour which is entitled The Code Dead Hands. Playing here in Los Angeles. You got a festival coming up, I believe. Let's see here. The Northwest Festival. Northwest, yeah, Northwest Terror Fest. Uh, you feel about playing that? I'm excited. Like, we did the, the Southwest Terror Fest, which I think had was like five years in. And we were actually supposed to play that this year, but then Southwest folded, and they're just doing Northwest now. One of so, the things that's interesting is the people that attend these shows, the, the difference of ages and music uh, tastes or what have you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like... Um, I, I just sort of feel like uh, like with Doom and Sludge and Stoner, like a lot of the times, you know, it's people over 30 that are really into it, but, that you know, there's tons of fucking kids that come out to these shows too. So it's like, uh, you know, Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, man. There's always going to be some kid smoking a joint, turning fucking 16 every <laughs> single year, hearing it for the first time. So there's young people that are super into it too. Yeah, I could picture 20 years from now some kid cranking the curse. Yep. Yeah, like for the first time. Graves at Sea, playing tonight. Again, as I mentioned, get the record out on Relapse Records now. Hopefully soon we'll they'll be able to... Uh, Disclose who the split is, yep. correct? Yep. But as of now, it's coming. Ken mentioned who. People will be excited about it. It's going to be a good one. Yeah. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Yeah, no problem, man. My pleasure. Graves at Sea. Chapopote. Is that how you say it right? Chapopote. Chapopote. The real deal. That's sludge in Spanish. Awesome. <laughs> Out. <laughs>